Hi, I'm Eric. Welcome to Beginner Ukulele Lesson 5. Um, today we're going to be learning some single notes on the ukulele and uh, a simple strumming pattern and learn how to follow um, sheet music um, just a little bit as far as strumming goes. Okay, so the first thing is, um, uh, well, learning how to read music. Um, a lot of ukulele tutorials don't get into reading single notes, but I think it's important, and I talk a little bit about that in lesson four. <clears throat> uh, the main reason I think it's important is because uh, once you learn how to read music, you can apply it to any other instruments, any other instrument you want to study, like violin or piano or flute or anything else. Um, and it also improves your technique, and it just makes you uh, a better musician. Okay, so the first three notes we're going to learn are C, D, and E. Um, now first let's talk about what they look like on the staff. So um, I'll have some pictures come up while I'm talking about this. So we have five lines on the staff, and we talked about the treble clef. The second line up on the staff is the G line, and that's also called the G clef. Um, we talked about our lines and spaces last lesson. Every good boy does fine on the line notes, and F-A-C-E spells face. The C we're going to learn is middle C. It's actually below the staff, so it's not included in that group I just mentioned, because it's below the staff, and it gets its own little line, and that little line is called a ledger line. That's why I always joke that it sort of looks like a flying saucer, because it's a note that's kind of floating there, but it's got this little line that goes through it. So that is middle C. And the way to play middle C on the ukulele is you just play your C string, which is the second string down from the top. So this one down here, yeah. C, okay. So that happens to be middle C on the piano too. If you have a piano or a keyboard, if you're familiar with that, um, you can find middle C um, right next to the two black notes on the left side of the two black notes. Um, so that's it. and. Um, Ledger lines are something we'll be getting into in the future. Um, just one more thing about that. When you have a note that's below the staff or above the staff, you have to use a ledger line um, to write that note. Because the staff lines, there's only five staff lines, and that covers a relatively narrow range um, of notes less than two octaves. So only about an octave and a half. So you need ledger lines to do the really high notes or the lower notes. Okay, so we've got middle C, that's the first single note. Next one is D. Now D is another funny one because it's not on the first line, it's just below the first line, so technically it's a space note. And it touches that first line, but it's not on the line. So that's D. And D is, on the ukulele is your second finger on the second fret, and we're still on that same C string D. So remember, open C string is C. D is the second fret of that same string. Okay, so there's D, and you're going to use your second finger as always for that. For the single notes, we'll always be using our correct fingers, um, unlike when we were doing the chords when we had to change which finger was doing which fret for those chord shapes. But for single notes, we're always sticking to our first position, and that's again why we have been doing our finger exercises. Um, first finger, first fret, second finger, second fret, and all of those. Okay, so that's D. And then the next note we're going to learn is E. Now E is on the line. So it's the first line note on the treble staff. That's on that bottom line. And that line goes right through the middle of it. That's a line note. So that's E. And the way to do that on the ukulele is you just play your open E string, which is the second string up from the bottom. E. And that's just open, and that's all it is. Okay. So again, we've got C, open C, second fret D, and E. All right, so there's your single notes. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about today is time signatures. We haven't really talked about this, but it's important to have an understanding, a basic understanding of time signatures in order to do the strum patterns that we're going to do. We haven't really gotten into strum patterns because I wanted to have this background information done first. Okay. So time signatures are really important for any kind of music. The most common time signature is 4-4, four, four, and that's when we count four beats to a measure. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's
that's oftentimes why you'll hear musicians say, one, two, three, four, and then they start playing, right? So they're counting off the time. The other common time signature is three, four time, and that's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, it's not as commonly used as the four, four time. In fact, four, four time, another way to say it is common time. Okay, so how do you write a time signature? It's got two numbers. We write it right next to the treble staff. Top number tells us how many counts or beats in the measure, and a measure is marked off by bar lines, which are the vertical lines that you'll see in music, creating these little boxes, and each box has to have a certain number of beats, um, and that's what the time signature tells us. So four, four time, the top number is four beats to a measure, the bottom number is uh, refers to the quarter note, which gets one beat. And um, that's really, um, we'll be doing quarter notes for a long time. So there are other time signatures um, where the quarter note is not the beat. Sometimes the eighth note is the beat or the half note is the beat, but we're gonna be sticking primarily with quarter note as our one beat. Okay, so um, so here's what, a, what it would look like if you had four quarter notes in one measure. So that vertical line is the measure and this is the first measure of a piece of music. We've got our treble clef, time signature, 4-4, four, four, and we've got four quarter notes. By the way, a quarter note is one beat, and that's what it looks like. Quarter notes can be upside down or right side up, and we've got four quarter notes in a measure, so we would count that one, two, three, four, all right? So if I were to clap that rhythm, it would just be one, two, three, four, and that's it. Now, when we do um, single notes, you'll have um, different kinds of notes. You might see quarter notes, you might see half notes. Um, half notes are two counts. You might see whole notes, whole notes are four counts. Um, so we'll go over those again next lesson. I'll get into a little more detail on that. <clears throat> okay, so strumming pattern. Um, let's say we have a bar, or a bar is a measure. Let's say we have a measure of four, four time. But instead of playing single notes, we just want to strum. We can do that. Instead of writing notes, we just write little slash marks. And you'll see this a lot with ukulele and guitar music too. And then above the staff, we write a letter, whatever letter of the chord we're playing. So if we're playing a G chord, we write a big letter G at the top. If we're playing a C chord, it's a C. Um, so it just tells you what chord you're playing at that moment for that measure. And let's say we've got a bar of four, four time and we're playing a G chord. Remember our G chord? All right, so we've got four strums on G. One, two, three, four. Okay, and that's it. Now you might have two measures of G. One, two, three, four, and again. One, two, three, four. And you just keep playing that G chord until it tells you to do something different. Um, but it's good to follow along with the music so you know where you are and count in fours. You could also have a different time signature, three, four time where you have three beats to a measure and three quarter notes in a measure, you would count one, two, three. And then if we were to strum, instead of single notes, if we actually strummed a chord, we would strum one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so that would be kind of reading a simple chord chart in three, four time. Um, okay, so. Just to review, single notes, C, D, E, open C, second fret D, and then open E. Okay, and then our time signatures, four, four time, three, four time, and you're encouraged to do any research you can do. The Wikipedia articles are good on that. Um, and then we've got our simple strum, just down strumming one, two, three, four, and four, four time, or one, two, three, one, two, three, and three, four time. All right, so that's it for lesson five. Um, just try to memorize what the C, D, and E look like on the staff. Remember, memorize which is which and then how to play them on the ukulele. Okay. All right, very good. And next week we'll get into strumming just a little bit more. We'll, we'll read some more strum charts and we'll try and we'll introduce you to some new notes. Okay, take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.